starting our midterm. Okay? So, we already finished prelims and we already finished in our adjustment period for our online classes. We already complied the three modules and we already had our prelim exam. So, by now, I am anticipating that during midterm, you will be working on your modules and you will be submitting your modules on the due date. So there will be no excuses anymore. All right? So I will share to you my presentation this morning, which I already uploaded on, uploaded on the canvas, on your canvas, and it is already under midterm module one. So this, and I would like to also remind you that if you are going to work on your modules, kindly do it one step at a time. So go to the modules part, do not go to the quizzes part directly. Okay, so are you seeing my screen already? Yes, please. Yes. All right, so our midterm starts with the topic STS and human flourishing. So these are the philosophies of Martin Heidegger, Jason Hickel, and C.S. Lewis. These writers or these philosophers had um, arguments regarding the use of science technology in its impact to society. So let us hear from them one by one. Okay, first and foremost, let me introduce to you to Industry 4.0. So have you heard about this industry already? During prelim, we already tackled about the history of science, wherein we had discussed the different scientific revolutions. So with that, um, in the ancient times, we already used science we already had technology and afterwards industry 1.0 that was the start of the industrial revolution wherein we had the mechanization and the introduction of steam and water power so in industry 1.0 trains were already there we already have ships which are powered by steam engines after Industry 1.0, Industry 2.0 came, wherein it was characterized by the mass production assembly lines using electrical power. So this was the great breakthrough in Industry 2.0 that was already after the scientific revolution, wherein we are making use of electrical power to power up the machineries. So in this stage, industrialization started wherein we must produce products, okay? So when we say mass produce products, we already have the factories by this time. After Industry 2.0, followed by Industry 3.0, wherein we started to automize the production of machines. So when we say automized, there are already automatic machines. So we have the computers, the IT systems, as well as the robotics. So in the Philippines, we are quite behind with these industries because we are a third world country, okay? But in the first world countries, they are already in the industry 4.0, wherein this is now characterized by the smart factory autonomous systems, the IoT or the Internet of Things, and the machine learning. So with this, everything is being powered by the Internet. Okay, so in the Philippines, there is a coming telecommunication company which is called D2 or DITO, wherein it promised us to give us a greater or wider coverage and stronger internet connection. And that will be coming this March 2021. Okay, so move over 
PLDT Globe and Smart. Get excited with that. All right. So with this, as what we had tackled, we have already four industrial revolutions and there are philosophers who had their arguments regarding this industrial revolution. So let us start off with Martin Heidegger. Martin Heidegger was a German philosopher who was um, dogged as the father of existential pheno phenomenology. He was the author of Being in Time, as well as his much celebrated book wherein he entitled it the question concerning technology and other essays martin heidegger um argumented or said that questioning is a piety of thought so that means that we should not take technology as is as beneficial to us human beings but we have to question technology on what are the disadvantages it brings to us. So the question is, what is the role of science and technology in our lives? We already tackled this during module one, wherein I had given you a reflection of the evolution of man as well as the evolution of technology. Okay, so you had your reflection and that already. So through that, there are common understanding of technology. First, it is the means to an end. It is a product of human activity, and it is a practical application of science. Since grade school, we already memorized the meaning of technology, which is an applied science, which is true. However, Heidegger said that technology is instrumental. And he argued that this is correct, but not true. And we pursue that true through the correct. So with that, he gave other definitions of technology, wherein he said that technology is bringing forth and making present. And what is brought forth is the truth. And he came to the uh, to the term Altea, which means truth or disclosure or unconcealedness in ancient Greek philosophy. So this bring forth is poesis, which is derived from the ancient Greek term, which means to make or the root of modern poetry. And he also introduced the term techne, which means craft or the root of technology. And it is the kind of bringing forth and using logic with it, technology is poesis. So is this idea of technology applicable to modern technology? Heidegger also gave an argument that technology is different from modern technology. While technology is bringing forth, modern technology challenges forth and it is very aggressive in its activity. So as what I have shown you during the industrial revolutions, as technology revolves in time, it became more aggressive in its activity. Modern technology sets or brings about a setting upon, expedites and concealment of nature, and stores that which is extracted from nature. So there is now the term nature. Heidegger included nature in technology. So with that, there came the term in framing wherein he defined it as a way of revealing modern technology. In framing views nature as calculable and orderable system of information which conceals poesis and the modern physics is the herald of and framing so the human person is now swallowed by technology as in your reflection in module one wherein you said that that um theory was charles darwin's theory 
that was indeed a reflection on how technology affects the human being. So with that, it is in questioning that we build a way. Questioning is a piety of thought, piety so radically distinct from the stance of control. Technology is usually thought of as that which solves problems, but Heidegger asserts it is something that we must question. So let's not just take all the advantages of technology. We must also question the disadvantages technology brings to us. So Asian is an ancient Greek word which means cause or reason that to which something else is indebted, not cause and effect. And Asian is responsible for bringing forth. So with that, we seek to master technology. That is, Heidegger says, we seek to get technology spiritually in hand. The will to mastery becomes all the more urgent the more technology threatens to sleep from human control. There are already various incidences that technology is sleeping out from human control. Instead of human beings controlling technology, it is already technology that is controlling us. And this is problematic in the event that technology might be something other than a mere means as its definition before so we need a free relation to technology and we can seek the true by way of the correct all right so i have here a photo of a falls and this is the maria christina falls so who had been to lano del norte and had a field trip in the Maria Cristina Falls. So as what you can see here, nature is very beautiful. It is very awesome with all the greeneries and the twin falls of Maria Cristina. There is even a rainbow here, which adds to the dramatic nature of our Mother Earth. We see nature this way from Maria Cristina Falls. However, there came technology. And the reality is this. There is a power plant in Maria Cristina Falls. Maria Cristina Falls has been used for its hydroelectric power. So this is the reality. People or human beings, aside from seeing this, this is now what they see in Maria Cristina Falls. Okay, another illustration is this. Okay, so as what you can observe in the photo, the hair of the woman in the photo is windswept. Okay, so she is feeling the air or she is feeling the wind who among you here feels the wind around us each and every time however we are not feeling this way the, the wind anymore this way but what we are seeing about the wind is the power that we can also generate from the wind so we have the wind mills out from that so we are not feeling the wind anymore we are already thinking of what we can get out from the wind another illustration this lavender field in france okay lavender is said to have calming and relaxing effect so with this we must enjoy the lavender scenery, we must enjoy the calming effect. However, we are not seeing lavender this way anymore. But 
we are seeing lavender from the oil that we can get from it. We extract lavender oil from the flowers to get essential oils. And another illustration, these cows. How do we see cows nowadays? We see them from the products they give us, the dairy products such as milk and cheese. And we also see cows from the meat they give us. We see them as the meat that we can eat. We are not seeing cows as respectable animals anymore. So that is in framing the way how we can get the most out of nature. So Heidegger said that modern technology views Earth as a huge gas station representative of the extraction, drilling, and drape of mother nature. Technology and modern technology is already abusing mother nature. So that is how Heidegger viewed it. Okay, now let us go to our um, adverse effects of modern technology. We have now the extinction of species, global warming, and climate change. And we will be tackling about these three effects during our finals. Okay? So, let us now go to our next philosophy. Yes. Okay, I am very sorry. I accidentally clicked X. Okay, okay lang eh. we are still recording. All right, so let us, I, I will look for the PPT first. Okay, so if you have questions so far regarding Martin Heidegger's philosophy, you can read them on modules uh, module one i already uploaded it two weeks ago um, um, i have a kind of question po. yeah uh, ano, sa activity na about the artwork kanang, do we need to defend each of the theories yes, yes you use the theories in drawing your artwork it is stated there that you explain the artwork using the theories of Heidegger, Lewis, and Hitler. Thank you, me. Excuse me, miss. Yeah? Can it be a digital artwork for some of us who don't have any it can color? can be a or digital artwork. And you can yes. also find on uh, our artwork that is already done by already done? our renowned artists like da vinci oh, yes. da vinci had a lot of work that are very detrimental that answered our questions on technology 
Okay, so I will be sharing again my screen to you. We are going to have overtime this morning. Okay, is my screen there already? Yes, Paul. All right, now let us go to our second philosopher named Jason Hickel. Jason Hickel said that our addiction to economic growth is killing us. So Jason Hickel is not um, concerning himself with the technology or focus on technology, but he is focusing on economy okay so he wrote this article entitled forget developing poor countries it's time to then develop rich countries this was written in 2015 so the main strategy for eradicating poverty is growth and more growth that is according to orthodox economists scientists are now telling us that we're blowing past planetary boundaries at breakneck speed so that means we are already violating the course of nature because modern technology is very very um fast paced so as we all know, um, the evidence for that are, are our cell phones. If there is a new model today, tomorrow, it's already outdated. So economist Peter Edward argues that instead of pushing poorer countries to catch up with rich ones, we should be thinking of ways to get rich countries to catch down to more appropriate levels of development. So that means rich countries can you stop developing okay so that the poorer countries will not have that very tough time in catching up with the richer ones okay so here kiko said or equated that rich countries means excess in income and consumption because they are rich of course they have a lot of resources a lot of employment sources that's why people have better employment opportunities and people can pay the taxes and consumption when we say consumption they are consuming more of their mother nature compared to the third world countries. However, being a rich country also have its downside because they do not have higher life expectancies anymore. Okay? So there are studies that show that people from poor countries have higher life expectancies compared to the people in the rich countries. And people in the rich countries entails to have lower literacy rates because they are not prioritizing education anymore. They are prioritizing the hands-on of all the technology they can have. So just like in China, even grade schoolers can create a computer already. And being a rich country, also does not entail happiness okay so just like in japan japanese have a lot of work opportunities they have every job in the market can offer and japanese are overworked so with that they don't have enough rest that's why there is a very high rate of suicide in japan okay so here, maybe I will accidentally click X again. The question is, is it possible to de-develop rich countries? Okay, de-develop, that means rich countries must downgrade 
in order to level up with the poor countries. So, Jason Hickel gave the theory of progress wherein he called it buen vivir or the good living. So, um, Robert and Edward Skidowski also ask how much is enough. So this requires reaching a higher level of understanding and consciousness about what we're doing here and why. So that is why first world countries always help third world countries in their initiative to equate all the countries. However, today in this pandemic, there will be a very great change in the economy or in the global economy. So what might happen next after this pandemic? Whose country will overpower? Will there be the superpower countries again? So that is the thing that we are going to reflect on. Okay, and the last philosopher, we have C.S. Lewis or Clive Staples Lewis. If you are familiar with him, he is the writer of the child or the children's novel entitled The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And C.S. Lewis is also a renowned Christian author. He is a scientist, he is a philosopher, but he believed in God. Okay, so he talked much about Jesus Christ and he have quite a collection of Christian books. And he also um, had the magician's magician's twin. So the magician's twin is a must-see trilogy of short programs by the Discovery Institute, applying some brilliant insights and arguments from C.S. Lewis to expose the fallacies of scientism and evolution, and to promote the reasonableness of intelligent design. Okay, so C.S. Lewis gave the term scientism. Based on the book of essays, The Magician's Twin, it is a very good series done on a small budget that shows real science points to the God of the universe. So as what I've said, C.S. Lewis believed in God. So you can just go on YouTube to watch The Magician's Twin. Okay? So he gave the term scientism. Scientism is the belief or ideology that science is the best or only test for truth of any kind. So with that, science as power where science becomes the dictator of the culture. So he equated science to magic. And through that, science becomes religion, credulity, and power. So scientism is an ideology already and some people regard that science as a religion so there are a handful of scientists that do not believe in god but already believe in their capabilities and science and with that science is also um equated as power so there is another term scientocracy wherein this is the practice of basing public policies on science. This is a government of the people, but informed by scientists. In the Philippines, we have democracy, and democracy is a government by the people. But scientocracy, it is still a government by the people or of the people, but it is informed by scientists there are scientists that are involved. So C.S. Lewis in the case against scientism explores Lewis' prophetic concerns about the misuse of science to abolish man and to undermine personal freedoms and human dignity. So Lewis already against scientism because we are already misusing science. So in misusing science, man is being abolished. That is his argument. So let us take a look at the 
summary of the arguments of our three philosophers for this topic. We have first Martin Heidegger, who said that technology is instrumental, and he gave the term in framing, wherein we are already seeing nature as what we can get from it and not what nature can give us. And he said that we must have free relation to technology. Second, we have Jason Hickel, wherein he said that the answer to poverty is growth. Poor countries need not catch up, but we must then develop rich countries. And lastly, C.S. Lewis equated science as magic, wherein he coined the term scientism, that means science becomes already religion, and scientocracy, wherein science already becomes power. So with this, I would like you to answer these three questions wherein I already posted in the discussions board. Okay? So with this, this is already open and it will be open for today only. I will not be accepting discussion answers on my inbox anymore. You already had your adjustment period during prelim wherein everything is being accepted. But this midterm, we have to be strict on the due dates already. And I also observe during prelim that you are not answering the discussion questions. So these discuss discussion questions are worth 10 points. You are graded with that. Okay? So this is open for today only until 11.59 p.m. And I will not be accepting discussion answers on my inbox anymore. So what will be our questions? We have our case, the Mars One Project. If you have heard about the Mars One Project, this is a Dutch initiative project that wants to have a permanent human colony on Mars by 2025 as its ultimate goal and is believed to be the next giant leap for mankind. So this was the project wherein there will be 100 human beings to be sent to Mars on 2025. They already started this project and these 100 human beings are already isolated in an environment which is um, a duplicate of Mars here on Earth. So if you want to have more information on that, just Google the Mars One Project. So you have to comment on this project by answering the following questions. First, how is in framing applied to what Mars One Project since human beings are, according to the Heideggerian philosophy? Second, is Mars One Project another way for growth and regrowth to eradicate poverty on Earth? Use Hickel's arguments. And lastly, can you consider Mars One Project as a proof of scientocracy? Explain your answer. And you will use Lewis' stand. Okay? Again, you are going to answer these questions by 11.59 p.m this morning i uh, know this evening okay so thank you very much for coming to class this morning inform your classmates that i will be posting this video for them for them to replay later so that they can participate in the discussions board so again, the discussions board will be due tonight, 11.59 p.m. If you fail to answer those questions using the discussions board, I will not be accepting answers on my inbox already. I, am, I will be stop recording now. Thank you very much for coming to 